Welcome everybody to RDA Tech Q and A. You've got questions. We've got guesses. Um, with me, as always, it's my producer Mike Gearman. Many, many years of tech support, sort of knowing and fiddly things. I am Nash. I have many, and for some reason, we have Film Brain tonight. Hello. Simply because, well, he's stuck here for the next few days, <laughs> so he's getting kind of getting dragged along into this. Why is he stuck there? Well, he, he needs a place to crash in Shermer. Because pe he's visiting people. Yeah. Okay. And it's free. I, I, I thought, I thought the, the, the magical, mystical land he comes from has phased out of reality again, and he can't go back until it phases back in. <laughs> well, no, the Brexit referendum's not quite in force just yet, but okay, soon, fair. soon. Yeah. So actually, actually I, I, I saw something. I saw something online. Um, uh, completely off top tech topic, but I didn't mm -hmm. know Matthew was going to be here. Uh, it said that because of the way British law is, all British law effectively comes from the monarchs. The monarch is technically immune to laws. Mm -hmm. So the queen could kill Nigel Farage and couldn't be charged. And I said, well, you don't want to kill Nigel Farage. Just get the queen to hit him in the nuts with a wiffle bat <laughs> and you'll get 10 million YouTube hits. <laughs> I just, you know what? I'm picturing the queen going on a bloody rampage, just saying the fuck with this, grabbing a couple of AKs, walking up and down the streets, just be like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck well, you. You, know, the you first don't like any kill. of these options. I like all these options. <laughs> the first person she'd kill would be Charles. You're not getting my throne. <laughs> you know what? We, we are actually, we, we're plotting out a B-movie as we speak. <laughs> this is a pitch. It this is. is this is a you could sell this to some little shitty studio and they would do it and it would it would the the people who make Sharknado. Yeah, dude, that would I'm, seriously. If we you saw them are accepting pictures these days. Totally send it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I would go with Killer Queen and we could possibly use it. You know, some Queen song. Oh damn, yo! This is some gold shit here. You've got a title and everything. Oh shit! This this. We're in business. This this actually <laughs> this actually sounds fucking viable. Act. We've got a premise. We've got a title. We just have to throw in some like uh, gratuitous uh, cameos, and we're sold. Yeah. And we, we'll we'll have like midnight screenings faster than you could say Tommy Wiseau, man. This this is fantastic. Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> We probably couldn't get Heather Marion to play uh, Miriam to play the Queen, though. Oh, N not enough money for that. Oh. All right. Well, back on topic. <laughs> it is in reality. <laughs> we'll be answering your tech questions here tonight. Anything you uh, may have need some assistance with, go ahead and send those to uh, requests at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q and A in the subject line. We'll see what we can do for you. Um, and we're also going to be looking at a little bit of the news, and wow. We've been talking on the show uh, quite a bit about how the Internet of Things is a horrifically bad situation right now. It is. Uh, largely because of, you know, things can't be updated or they can't be secured because someone puts out, oh, we're going to put a light bulb with an Internet address on it so you can control your lights. And they, whatever they build it with is flawed. So they can't patch it, or they don't want to patch it, or they don't care if they patch it. Yeah. Because the, they've got your money already. They're making very cheap devices with very bad to no security on them and just putting them on the Internet. Now, these aren't like your computer or your tablet or your smartphone where they already unless have. Unless you've got a Lenovo. Unless you have Lenovo, yeah. The, unless you, where uh, most computing devices have some basic security features in them and you get alerted when your computer is doing something it shouldn't and normally to get to get infected with malware you have to actually go to certain sites and you have most of the time if you have any sense in your head hell even windows has it basically built in some sort of malware protection on your yeah. system the problem with these Internet of Things devices, like Mike was talking about, light bulbs and refrigerators and thermostats, thermostats and pet feeders, which was hilarious. There's a cat feeder 
that they the the maker put out it's it's an a internet of things cat feeder you can feed your cat across the internet you push a button it dispenses food except one of the makers came out the the, the manufacturer of the cat feeder came out and said uh yeah if we if our service has an outage it won't feed your cat so sucks to be you yeah <laughs> and, see i was thinking someone goes oh i found i found the cat feeder online that cat's getting fed today. Now, now, now. And the cats are going like, I don't know why this is happening, <laughs> but I don't mind. <laughs> Best day ever. Yes, dildos as well. There are internet connected dildos. I, I still, I, of, of the things that you can put online, internet connected dildos is probably the worst. Worst. Now, because even, even when it's not used, suddenly something in your dresser drawer starts vibrating three in the morning and you're like there's a burglar in the house oh no hackers have found the dildos <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the the future this is our future well here's here's why we're bringing it up now um all of these devices have very low security they also have problems like uh standardized passwords and other things which enable them to get turned into zombies and when we say standardized passwords, it can be simple as things like the password is password. Yeah. Or it's one, two, three, four. You know, the kind of thing a moron would put on his luggage. Exactly. We, we, we're, we're talking about, when I say zombies, I am not talking about George Romero. I'm talking about these devices are very, very easily able to be logged into, have software uploaded to them from somewhere else and turn these into what's called a botnet. A botnet is a malicious swarm of devices distributed randomly across the internet, all, all different kinds of things, as long as they have an internet connection. And they're used to construct what's called a distributed denial of service attack. Now, sometimes all this needs to be is the device being told, here's the IP address, and it's and the device goes to that IP address and goes, hi, yes, hi, hi, and just keeps saying hello to it. And of course, the device wants the other thing on the other one wants to respond to that because that's how the network stack is built. Right. When you go to a website, your computer, when you type in even Google.com and you go to a website, your computer goes to Google and says, hello. And Google says, well, hello. What would you like to do today? Well, let's do stuff. Now imagine. Imagine that's you at your house. Someone comes up to you, knocks on your door, and says, hello. And you go, hello. Now imagine 50 million people showed up at your house at the same time, all of them going, hello, hello, hello. All and of you're supposed to answer all of them. You have to answer all of them. It's the law. That's what a distributed denial of service attack is. It's all of these devices being turned into little weapons that run around and go, hello, 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 hello. And this sends so much data to a particular site, the site can't handle it, and it buckles, and it goes offline. Hence, denial of service. Or even if it doesn't go offline, people trying to get to it are such a small percentage, even though they're the legitimate ones, uh, of what's going on, that it's responding. Yes, you're 9,000th in the queue, and the next legitimate person is 150,000th in the queue. And the next legitimate person is 1 millionth in the queue. And no one can reach your site. Now, this has been a bad week for all of this. And why I'm bringing this up is it kind of started with a very reputable um, internet uh, security expert. Uh, Krebs on Security is his website. Brian Krebs uh, runs it. And uh, this began with an a record-breaking denial-of-service attack on his site. Um, he published an article about carters. And when I say carters, I mean people who make their living stealing credit card information and selling it off to other people. They, they steal credit cards on the Internet all the time. Well, he made some people angry by revealing all this information about how the, the credit card fraud and stuff works and all these other things. And they, and they were doing some VDOS stuff as well. Yeah. DDoS stuff, uh, using a service called VDOS, sorry. And so he, he published some stuff, and including how some of them got arrested, which is news. I mean, it's not like 
he'd gone out and said, I got these guys arrested. No. Just posted the analysis. He said, this is what happened. This is why. Here's the people who got punished. And they didn't like it. So they sent up to 620 gigabits per second of junk data to his site, which was so much that his provider, his service provider, uh, Akami, Akamai, Akamai? Akamai. Akamai. Um, his service provider, which which actually offers DDoS protection in case this happens, they, they, they have ways to mitigate this, they couldn't keep up with it. It was, it, it's one of the largest uh, distributed denial of service attacks in the history of DDoS attacks. It, it, it was so big, it completely knocked him, knocked him offline. Yeah, this is about double the size of the uh, 2013 one that hit Spam House, which was the previous sort of record holder, uh -huh. which was, uh, you know, the, well, they've been knocked out. Wow, this is bad. We should possibly do something about this sort of uh, thing. And some stuff was done, but then the Internet of Things hit and uh, now there's even bigger issues. Yeah, and it didn't just stop with Brian Krebs because later in the week, a similar ridiculously huge DDoS attack hit Newsweek after they published an article about Donald Trump and how he may have, more than likely, uh, broken the law by making business dealings with Cuba oh. during the embargo. To, to correct, to investigating business dealings yeah. in Cuba, which, let's be clear here, his campaign has effectively admitted. They said, yeah, we were there, we did that. Uh, they're trying to take the heat off Trump, saying it was people in his organization. But apparently, the guy who wrote the thing for Newsweek has a stack of evidence he's been slowly releasing on Twitter, and there's going to be more Newsweek stories to come. The Newsweek one originated largely in Russia, Russia being good friends with Trump. Yeah. So, and again, what this this uh, denial of service attack involved was tons and tons of Internet of Things devices, including they uh, looked it up. A lot of these were these Internet connected cameras. People are used for security in their homes. Yeah. Um, some more investigation. Doug uh, Boing Boing reported on this. Uh, well, they they uh, they linked to this. For, well, Symantec did some looking at this. Um, according to them, the logins on most of these devices, default passwords of root and admin, uh, other common logins include one two three four five six test and oracle. These aren't changed when people get the devices. They don't change the default passwords. They don't think to. And, well, in some cases, they can't. Yeah, in some cases, those default passwords... There's, no, there's nothing you can log into to change. Yeah, you can't... Some of these law, some of these devices <clears throat> don't have interfaces that allow you to control them, like you would, say, your router or your even your smart TV. They don't have the kind of inter interfaces. What is happening is all of these very cheap internet-connected devices are being flooded onto the market with little to no security on them. And they're now, they are posing a danger to the structure of the internet itself. To the point where we're probably gonna need a law saying, because the, the manufacturers aren't gonna do it on their own. Right, they're going to have to be held criminally liable for- yeah. Well, they won't be able to, they won't be able to help, be able to help, be held criminally liable until there's a law. So we'll probably have to end up having a law, and people will say this is a useless law, this is a needless law. Uh, but it's gonna have. There's going to be something saying you have to provide patching for a certain date, or you can't use default passwords, or something of that nature. Security suspect, updates for critical. I, fit. Yeah, yeah. I suspect California will probably lead the way, and eventually there'll be a national law to keep there from being a patchwork of fifty states worth of laws. Yeah, because right it's now, different. understand we're looking at one terabit, not terabyte, but terabit DDoS attacks. That is above and beyond anything that we have currently in our arsenal to mitigate. These are DDoS attacks that up until now we've been able to kind of balance out and deal with DDoS attacks. They still had impact, 
But there were ways to work around them. Like, for example, we were talking about Krebs site, the DDoS protection. What they would do is they would shift the traffic for his site to a different IP address temporarily and move things around and redirect things so that you could still access the site even while the DDoS is going on. But the reason they couldn't was it was so massive, it was bringing down the whole network over at, the, at his hosting system. If you can't mitigate a DDoS effect, uh, attack, that means large. And we're talking, Newsweek is not a small website. Newsweek. Yeah, yeah, they're not a fly-by-night company. It's not, you know, radio dead air being hit with DDoS <laughs> going, yeah. what are we going to do? This is, you know, a national newspaper, uh, magazine. Yeah. And it, it means that things we once thought of as pretty much protected against these sort of things like Netflix or even YouTube, which handles massive amounts of traffic already. Might not be. Might, able to handle it. Yeah. Especially as more and more of these Internet of Things devices come out mm. and more and more of them are ridiculously insecure. We're looking, I mean, it, it, something has got to be done. As of right now, if you have an Internet of Things device, get the fuck rid of it. <laughs> yes, I know you like your neat little light bulb that you could change the colors of with your smartphone and it's adorable. I know for some weird reason you like having a smart lock on your front door that you could open with a passcode. That's not insecure at all. No. <laughs> I, I know you love having your internet connected cars and your internet connected fridge that tells you when you need to buy milk. Yeah. And uh, a lot of you are going, well, that, so what if they're being used for these sort of things that doesn't affect me? Yes, it, it does. Kind of does. Yeah. Hey, this is just one way it affects you. Comcast in the U.S., at least in the U.S., I, I've asked around. Apparently, U.K. doesn't have uh, uh, data caps. Uh, they do on sort of the very lower end of sort of yeah. cases, but it's not really a very wide thing. There is a lot of unlimited caps and things like that. So. They, have, they have $10 a month broadband as a regular option in the U.K. $10 a month! I mean, ten dollars or ten pounds? pounds. No, five pounds. Ten dollars. Okay. Okay. Ten dollars a month broadband in the UK. It's the low tier, but it's ten bucks. Hmm. So I, I've checked there, but in the US we have to deal with these data caps. And when your devices, your Internet of Things devices, start sending all of this data as part of a DDoS botnet. You are liable for the data it's sending. Yeah, and that could be how, you know, we see the occasional story of someone going, I'm being, you know, Comcast is overcharging me. I don't have any devices that are doing this. I'm not, I wasn't home. Well, but your devices were. Yeah. Maybe, maybe something was involved there that you just didn't think of. You've got one smart light bulb, and it was used in a DDoS attack. You know, it's only a few bytes each ping or each, each uh, uh, communication attempt. But it adds up over an eight-hour period. And the scary thing is, of course, if, if, if your device is being used in these attacks, you won't know No, nope. all. <laughs> nope. You have no way to log into these devices. You have no way to, uh, unless you keep track of it at the router level and keep logs yourself. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, you know, in most cases, you can't even turn off, uh, you can't even at your router level say, this thing can't communicate outside the home network because it's, they don't have it where you communicate directly with the device to change your light bulb colors, colors, you communicate with their server, which then communicates back to your light bulb to do it. So you've got to have it go through your router. Yep. So you are, eventually that sort of data will put you over your data cap and it starts costing you money. And it ain't cheap when you go over your data cap. It's like, I think $30 for another five gigabytes. It depends on the service, but yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Comcast or I mean, Comcast I mean, or sons of bitches. I mean, back in the day, I I overrun my data cap, but man, that, that ouch. <laughs> yeah, Comcast are complete sons of bitches about that shit. Um, and, yeah, they they're not to let me ask you know, there's their their data caps work where if you buy the limited, you you buy the data cap plan. If you go over it, you pay a large amount of money, or you can pay a certain more amount of money to go to the unlimited data plan. Mm. 
mm-hmm. in which case, you know, you don't have that issue. But if you're on the limited data plan and you get to the point where you would have paid for the unlimited data plan for, through your overages, they don't just upgrade you automatically. They just charge you a lot more money. And yeah. while we're on the subject of data caps, we have another story. One of the most tone deaf, ridiculous fucking things. Mediacom, the FCC is trying to crack down on data caps in the U.S. They're investigating. They're looking at how they're being used in the market. Mediacom is an ISP that tried to put in a comment on this and told the FCC the Internet is Oreos, so we should be able to charge more. Here is the argument. Okay, wait a quick, quick, quick question before you get to the argument. Do these Oreos come in tubes? No, they don't. Oh. <laughs> Mediacom General Counsel Joseph E. Young explains, quote, It would be nice if your $2 bought you the right to eat an unlimited number of cookies, but you know this is not the way our economy works. It is the same, Young continues, for the Starbucks latte you might want to drink with your cookies or and for your socks, gasoline, just about every single one of the thousands of products and services that are for sale in the United States, including essentials like water and electricity. What? <laughs> okay, I, I have a very important question here. Mm-hmm. Who eats Oreos and has Starbucks latte at the same time? Douchebags. <laughs> Okay. I'm wondering what the internet's delicious filling is meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be porn. What they're trying to say is the more internet you use, the more you should pay. And there's a problem with that. I mean, you look at that and they go, oh, that sort of makes sense. Except there's one major difference. With everything else, Oreos, lattes, socks, gas, water, electricity, when you use it, you sort of use it up. Okay, maybe not so much in the way of socks unless you're really rough on them. But if I if I buy gas, I'm burning that gas in my car. It goes or away. Burning that gas on someone else's car. But statute of limitations has run out on that. So um internet, when I use internet, I haven't used up my ISPs, limited stores of internet. If I go, I need some internet, I haven't taken away someone else's internet. Uh, oh, um, yeah, unless you're using no. um, if, unless you're using a shared connection, I might be using more bandwidth than them, but that's not the same thing. Right. I'm using I'm using internet, and it's not a not it's not a pizza. If I take a bunch of internet, no one else is going. Well, I wanted three slices. I only got two. No, they, they, it doesn't you, work with that. It's not a perishable commodity. Basically. No. There you go. Now, exactly. while it's, while bandwidth does cost ISPs, it costs them pennies on the dollar. They are making way more money on yeah. bandwidth than the, they are spending to acquire it. Now, if they were taking a significant portion of that money and putting it into network upgrades mm-hmm. and infrastructure and making the, the network faster, better, stronger, you know, like a Daft Punk song, um, then we would be, Nash and I would be the kind of people who'd be a little bit more okay with what they charge. Mm-hmm. But they're not doing that. They're no. complaining. Oh no, our internet is full. We can't. We have to do this for. We have to have caps and these things for for network management, and then they proceed to give themselves a million dollar bonus or a two million dollar bonus. And, a, or, and the big one, mm, shareholder dividends. Shareholder dividends. And don't get me wrong. If I had shares in some of these ISPs, and who knows, some of my four hundred one k might be in some of these. I I don't really know. Um. I should look into that. But, uh, well, it's, I, I, Probably, I, buy, yeah. I, I, I buy into, I do the same thing everyone does with the 4OK. I buy into, into, into pools. So, but um, beyond the top of this. But they, they don't do the stuff that would make it, in, at least in theory, less limited. The analogy that they're using is, well, there's only so many Oreos, but we're not going to make more Oreos. No. Mm. By the way, you've got a nice uh, fog machine effect going on right now. Yay! No, it's what, what's going on here is they're trying to justify the data caps by saying you're using up the internet. Other people won't have internet, which isn't true. Right. And here's another thing: if they were really concerned about network viability, about the the ability for everyone to get access to the internet, they would, they would not. 
they well, would make more internet. And they would not offer some of the speed tiers they offer. Mm. Exactly. Because while things moving through the pipe of the internet all go through, the bigger the pipe, the higher the data ability to the, the speed back and forth, the, the more can move through at a given time. Which is not just for you, it's for your neighbors and everyone in your city, and right. other cities, etc. And that, if they were truly concerned, they would not offer certain speed tiers, especially the highest ones, because those would be considered a detriment to the internet, of everyone's ability to, but they're not removing those, they're allowing those. So obviously they don't have a problem with capacity because those speed tiers are still available. Yeah, and what, also what they don't do, you know, he, can, he likens it to electricity or gasoline or Oreos. If I stop eating Oreos, my Oreo bill goes down. If I am on travel for work and my car is just sitting in my driveway, I'm not buying gas. I'm not using the internet. My bill should go down. It doesn't do that. No, you still, you pay a the same, even if you don't use as much as someone else who uses more, you're both paying the same for the internet. Why is that? Uh, because if the analogy holds, I didn't eat as many Oreos as my neighbor. Why am I paying as much as he does? He ate 20 Oreos. I only ate two. But we paid the same price for the Oreos. What the fuck is up with that? So th this analogy does not hold up. This analogy mm -hmm. comes from some someone who assumes that everyone is stupid and they don't understand things. This sounds like an analogy that my dad would come up with. <laughs> I, yeah, it's and, a and dad the, analogy, and the analogy. I j hey, example. I just I, I just made that a dad analogy. I just yeah. I made that up. That's mine. <laughs> I, I'm putting my stamp in that, patented it. You guys can't use it. That's my word. Dad analogy. Ha. What, 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 and, and no, no, part you of his, yeah, part of his analogy is you know, if you want faster, better, you pay for more. The same way you pay more for double stuff Oreos. And the the guys uh, consumerist said. That doesn't sound right. And they went down to their store and they pack, bought a package of Oreos. I bought a package of double stuff Oreos and they go, these are the same price. These <laughs> 50 cookies, same price. Double stuff or not double stuff. This analogy doesn't hold up. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very insulting to consumers analogy mm. in that it's so nonsensical. And, and they went to the FCC with this. And the FCC does not have stupid people at it. Thank God. They got, got a couple. They got a couple people who don't like putting in regulations, but those are the Republican appointees who are like, no, no, we don't feel like doing our job. That's, they're not being stupid; they're being corporatists. We 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 have we honestly, Tom Wheeler has been the best head of the FCC but I, in ages. Me, part of me wants to think he saw all the criticism about how he would be a a corporate stooge, and he's like, no, fuck that. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to be my own guy the entire time I'm here. And he, he's kept to that. So, yeah. And it was it was really surprising to a lot of people who are watching him. He was like, wait, he did what? Yeah, he didn't suck. So, in short order, data caps are bullshit. And here's another reason I was bringing up the UK. Um, okay. Okay. You don't have data caps. Not really. I mean, the very, very cheap packages, yeah, but for the most part, not really. But what, what you do have is competition. Yes. You have, um, what is it, last mile service, what is, was unbundling? Local loop unbundling. Mm. You have local loop unbundling in the UK, which means that the, the uh, people who hold the, who, the network itself, the physical network, have to allow other competitors to sell services across that network. BT in the UK, yeah. for example. British Telephone. Yeah. Yeah. And and they have a uh, I don't necessarily remember the name. Is it Ofcom? Is the Yeah, Ofcom is the uh, regulator in the UK. Yeah, the the regulator over there has absolutely no qualms about apparently going after people who do things that piss off customers or that mm. piss off Ofcom. Because apparently Ofcom has a few times gone like, "No, we don't like that." Fine. Yeah, they they have they have competition in the internet. They have you have different providers you can choose between in the same town. You could you can have in in the same town you can have four or five or more different providers 
which we don't have here. No. And no, we have one. One. Comcast is our only internet source right now. And for me, it's I want to say Time Warner. No, no, excuse me. Hold on. We just changed. Because they that um Charter. No, who was it? Um Verizon. No, no, they they changed their name. They got they bought out, they changed their name. It's um Oh blast. My roommate pays the bill, so I <laughs> it's, it, it's his house. I just I just periodically say, hey, can we switch to fiber? And he goes, Not yet. Yeah, it's it's because the UK has, uh, and the Netherlands and a couple other places, I checked, I asked some people on Twitter, they have competition in those places, and they don't have data caps. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same hmm. thing that's happened everywhere that Google Fiber has rolled out. Yes. Data yes. caps have strangely disappeared, and prices have gone down, or at least not gone up to the, in the, in the same UK, volume that they previously done. Google said, we're going to compete here. And everyone who was there panicked. Yeah. Yeah, th this... So, could it possibly so, be that data caps have fuck all to do with network congestion and providing the same service to everybody? And more about milking a captive consumer? Maybe? Maybe they're just a little bit extortion Just Yes, a little, a little bit fucking and God, sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. Anyway. All right, now that we've handled the news, let's go on and look at your questions for this week. And we we just gained a new one at the very end, so I'm going to start with that one. Okay, it's, do I have this one? No, no, we, we just got this one in. Let me, I'll read it to you right now. This one comes okay. to us from Eric. He says, so I am looking at updating my monitors for my computer. I mostly game and watch stuff on computers, so don't need anything fancy. But how do I know what I'm looking for in a monitor? Size is not an issue. It's always an issue. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they tell you size is not an issue, they're just being polite. Sorry, Eric, I'm just telling you. Size is not an issue that matters in this. I'm also custom building a desk, so once I find a monitor, I can build whatever size I decide I want them to be. I am for sure going with a two-monitor setup. May go with three, but I also do host D&D, &D, so more monitors would be nice for all my game notes. Okay. Well, you mentioned gaming, and I assume you mean video gaming, so we're going to take that into account. Um... Let's start with the absolute basics. Connections. Train. Train. Yeah. Was... Hello, train. <laughs> um, okay, so connections, uh, I would say uh, HDMI. Yeah, make sure, and not just HDMI, make sure whichever monitor you get, if you can, if you're able to, has the latest uh, incarnation of HDMI, which is 2.2 right now, I believe. Uh, looking right now, I yeah. think we, we we covered yeah no two point one two point one. I keep saying two point two. I don't know why. Uh, HDMI two point one. Although although two point one is unreleased, is in design review phase. So if they say two point one compatible, uh, that's probably yeah that that they're they're going well. The latest notes on two point one will be compatible with those. Yeah. If you if you go two, you'll be pretty good. Now the reason we the reason I I try to to talk about that is once you have an HDMI device. It is what it is. You can't. It's like USB 2.0, 3.0. You can't update it later. So yeah. if you get an HDMI 2.1 device, that's the latest one you can get. It's you're not going to be up, up able to upgrade it later, which means you want to make sure. It, now, not every monitor will be compatible that way. You have to decide if that's a big enough issue for you. What, what you're going to be plugging it into? HDMI by itself might be just fine for you, um, but keep in mind if you get an HDMI 1.4 device you're not going to be able to use 2.2 features later or 2.1 yes. features later. If you, so. yeah, if you get two, if you get a 2.0, you might not be able to use 2.1 depending right. on the compatibility of the of the features. So that that's that's the first thing to keep in mind. Um also you might want to decide if for some weird reason you want Thunderbolt compatibility or DisplayPort or those others. Not a whole lot of people use them, especially consumer game level. Everything is pretty much decided that HDMI is the standard we're following right now. Yeah, probably for the next few years. Yeah, so you should be good with an HDMI connection. I don't foresee anything within at least five years supplanting that. Everything's going to maintain HDMI compatibility for at least the next five years, if not longer. I mean, how long did DVI stick around? Uh, 
I'd say easily five or six. It's I mean, it's still around in plenty of places. Yeah, but it's still around. It's, it's still around all the places, all over the place in corporate. Yeah, it's about so it, it's been around for about two, three decades, and we, yeah. we're the DVI. I mean, DVI stayed around as the main thing for five. I'd say five, six, six or seven years yeah. before DisplayPort came out, and then DisplayPort was relatively quickly supplanted by HDMI. Uh, HDMI. So that's um, the first one. To, um, as far as monitors, of course, yeah, you say you, bigger is better. I, I'd go with a. a um, what's? The, I always forget the, the term here. Not resolution aspect ratio. I'd go with the widescreen aspect ratio. But that's just my preference. Uh, I think you, you, you get better things and you know if you're using it to watch you know movies as well many of them are coming out in widescreen you know on yeah you know, it's all netflix the or line, yeah. yeah and it, it just it just looks better to me now you do say we while while size in this case it's actually size doesn't matter so much as resolution matters yes mm -hmm. you want the best resolution you can get uh you that you can afford i mean if you if, if money's no object then you know 4K. Uh, 4K. 4K, if, yeah. If money's absolutely no object, there's an 8K out now, isn't there? Good God. What? I, I want to say it's, it's out, but no one's really using it. <laughs> I, I don't think it's out yet, but I think there's, I, I think there's definitely talk of, you know, sort of launching those kind of things. But uh, I think 4K, 4K is probably the most you can get at this level at the minute, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you want to pay $20,000 for a monitor. Now, when we talk about resolution, resolution is completely independent of screen size. You could have a 30-inch monitor that can only go up to 1080p resolution, and you could have a 21-inch monitor that can go all the way up to 4K. What resolution means is the number of pixels that can be displayed on the screen at a given time. The more pixels that can be displayed, the sharper the image you get on the screen is, the better you can make... It looks clearer because it has more pixels to draw curves and lines, and it, it, has it adds... More definition. Yeah, more definition. Um, uh, and 4K monitors uh, of uh, a decent, res you know, decent uh, price resolution. You're looking at a thousand dollars a monitor in many cases. Yeah. So, or two thousand dollars a monitor if you buy <coughs> HP. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend HP. LG makes perfectly good 4K monitors. Um, yeah. Even to... Dell, even Dell makes perfectly good 4K monitors. You you have to consider also that we are at a bit of a crossroads for this sort of stuff. Mm. If you can get a 4K monitor, I would get one, mainly because that's where things are going. And monitors are one of those things that people upgrade the least. Uh, people tend to get monitors and keep them for years and years between different computers and just hold on to them forever. Because really, there's not a whole lot to upgrade when it comes to a monitor except getting a whole new one. Yeah. Um, and I was wrong about 8K. There's a 5K monitor. 5K. 5K, ah, oh, this annoys me. Okay, there is no such thing as 5K. This is an that's, Apple... That's what they're billing it as. Well, no, this is Dell billing it as. Yeah, well. Apple started it, though. Apple said, you want a 4K monitor? We have a 5K monitor. There is no 5K standard. <laughs> it's marketing buzzword bullshit. Apple pulled it... There is a 4K industry standard for monitors. 4K slash Ultra HD. That is an industry standard that works across the board. Everyone agreed on it. Apple pulled this 5K shit right out of their ass, and now Dell's buying into it. It's marketing buzzword. Well, hey, Grady. Yeah. Hi. You terrified of me. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. He's still not sure about hey. Matthew. Now he's but fucking he, off. But, but he <laughs> heard you ranting and thought it was safe. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, 5K, don't, don't take the, understand there, it's, that's just marketing bullshit. Um, yeah, yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm just looking at Newegg and you're seeing what was available. Uh, LG makes some, some decent monitors. Uh, Samsung makes decent monitors. HP makes decent monitors. So I would say, you know, as, as big as, as big as you can afford. Now, yeah. keep in mind, the other, one of the other things to keep in mind is there is supposed to be sort of a minimum distance between you and the monitor for the best resolution. Yeah. So if you say, oh, I'm buying a 32 inch monitor and I'm gonna sit 16 inches away from it. Okay, you're, you're a little crazy. You need to sit a little bit further back. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so make sure you take that into account when you're when you're looking at your purchases, looking at, build. you said building your own desk. 
well done, but uh, that's things taken into effect, uh, into account. And if you go two or three monitors, you go two monitors, obviously you want to go two identical because, you know, that's just how you're going to set up. It's going to look better for you. If you go three, then you can have one large one and two smaller ones, and that works really well, too. Hi. So it's just... What the fuck are you doing? Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> he's, he's not sure about this bullshit yet. Um, he, he heard you say fuck plenty of times. He figured it was safe to come out. The last thing you want to keep in mind, and you mentioned gaming. Refresh rate is yes. an important issue. Um, for gaming, refresh rate comes into play more because... The lower the refresh rate of your screen, the more likely you're going to get stutters and ghosting and things things won't move quite so smoothly across the screen. Um, the higher the refresh rate, the more things look like full motion, th th there's no blurriness. You can see, you can watch something run across your screen and it's the full details there the entire way. Yeah, and oh, and part of this, by the way, is you're going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the majority of this is going to be heavily dependent on your graphic card. Yeah. But the good news and, is you can and, upgrade that later. Yes. And, but the other thing you need to be aware of is how many video outs your graphic card has. So you're saying, oh, I want to do three monitors, three HDMI monitors. And you go look at your graphics card and it goes, oh, I only have two HDMI outs. You may need to get so a, a third, third monitor. They're going, hmm. A DVI well, adapter. No, always keep in mind, a DVI adapter is technically the same pinout as HDMI. Hmm. So you can make do with that if you have to. I mean, I, yeah, I had the problem because I've, I've had the TV for ages and that, that only has one HDMI port on it and I had to buy a splitter. Oh, <laughs> what, what kind of port is that, Matthew? HD... <laughs> you love the way I say H, don't you? <laughs> is it a, an a, did you say HDMI, Matthew? <laughs> yes, I did say HDMI. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you making fun of him the same, same way some people make, try to get Irish people to say 33rd? Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, so look at look at what your video card has as outputs as well. I mean, don't 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 just listen to us and go and buy the biggest and best monitor you have and then discover your, your outputs don't match. Uh, you may end up going with two video cards as well. Yeah. You know, SLI is a possibility. If you're talking, you know, you didn't say what your budget was, but it's yeah. something to keep in mind. The the newest uh, video card from um, Nvidia. That's the one. Sorry. Uh, I have I have one of their new ones in my computer. I just couldn't remember the name. I'm so jealous. Um, yeah, uh, has plenty of outputs. I couldn't tell you how many HDMI outputs it has without going off screen briefly and look crawling over and looking. Yeah. But it's got lots. So to sum up, um, do you oh one other thing, when you're plugging one thing, some people do not consider when plugging multiple monitors into their video card. This does make the video card run a little bit hotter. Yeah. So make sure your cooling is in place, too. So things to look for in monitors. To sum up, you want to make sure you have HDMI, and if at all possible, the latest version of HDMI connectors on your monitor. You want to take into account resolution and get the highest resolution monitors you can. Size is not as big a deal as resolution will be in the long run. And finally, you want to keep an eye on your refresh rate. If you're going to be doing gaming, you want 120 uh, hertz. If that's not such a big deal to you, 60 hertz refresh refresh rate is kind of the standard across the board, and you should be okay. But yeah. if you're gaming, you will really appreciate having an 120 a 120 hertz refresh rate on the monitors. Um, hey goofball, where are you going? No, you're running. Away. You're being. He's being stupid. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Mike, do which one should we do next? Ah, uh, let's see here. Um, I don't know. Pick one. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, video capture, the video capture device one sounds interesting. Oh, this one. God damn it. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to do that one? Oh, we can do it, but god damn it. Um, it, it, it does sound... This, this one sounds like it's relatively straightforward in the answer, but you're not going to like the answer. Yeah. Uh, joke them. Uh had this question for us. Hello, Nash, Mike, and Greedy. I don't know what my cat's going to be able to do to help you. We can barely help you with this. Recently bought a video capture device from a company called Elgato. Elgato? The cat? 
You, that, that's, that's why I included Grady. Yes. Ah. The product had decent reviews, cost me about $100. The idea was to digitize a large box of VHS C tapes with family movies from the early 90s. Mm. Installed the software and drivers from the manufacturer's website. When I started the software, it asked me to connect the capture device, even though it's already connected. I've done the usual troubleshooting, so disconnecting the device, change the USB port, restart the computer, reinstall the software and drivers, and nothing works. I even tried to use another computer, but still received the same error, both computers running Windows 10 Pro X64. I can't find the device in the device manager, and it gives me the following error. The device drivers are not installed. There are no drivers compatible with this device. Click update device to do uh, update driver, do a driver search. So I suspect there's something wrong with the manufacturer's drivers. They may not support Windows 10 or something. Any advice on what should I do? Have I spent $100 on a useless product? Do I need to buy a new capturing device? In that case, what should I buy? Um, well, okay, so I go to their site, uh -huh. and they say download the drivers for this. It doesn't say download the Windows 7 drivers, download the 8 drivers, download the 10 drivers. It just has one download for the drivers. And it says Windows 7 and up. Um, no, it doesn't even say that. Really? Because I went and I looked, and it saw it said... Now, maybe, maybe I'm looking at a different page. System, system requirements Windows 7 or later, but the drivers doesn't say... When, I mean, you'd think that'd be it, but it, it could very well be the drivers are not 100% compatible with Windows 10. We've run into this a lot. It, it's very common for Windows 7 and Windows 8 drivers not to work, or not to work well with Windows 10. Yeah. Sometimes not at all. So, yeah, what this might be is... I, I tend to suspect this is not a problem with the device so much as it's a problem with... Windows 10 and the manufacturer just hasn't caught up yet. Um, it, it says to me the drivers are on some level not compatible with Windows 10. That's my guess. I wouldn't know without having a little bit more. It could be just randomly you got a broken device. Yes, it's all possible. It's possible you got a bad one out of the box. Um, but my gut is telling me that the manufacturer's drivers just aren't Windows 10 ready yet. Because, again, like we said, there's nothing on that site that even mentions Windows 10. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just looking, and yeah, there's a few other devices out there. Um, how page USB Live 2 works in Windows 10. Never, we've, I've never used anything to capture, to take data off of VHS tape. Um... I, I used uh, to do that back in the day. I mean, what I used to do is I, I used to have the, the video recorders connected to my DVD recorder. That's how I used to do that. Mm. The sort of scout cable connects to the, you know, the composites. But in terms of getting it ripping straight to the computer, ugh. Um, well, there's an Amazon. Uh, on Amazon, there's a, it looks like it's just a dongle where it's, it's yeah, USB. Dongle. Yeah, USB plugs straight into... Um, the the video outs from your VCR, um, you know your standard red, uh, yellow, white cables, uh, and it's fifty four, you know, fifty five dollars plus shipping. Personally, shipping. I, I I would tend to stick with uh, hop. How do you say that? Hop and gauge, hop and hop and gauge. Uh, oh, the one, the one I, That's it. Um, I tend to okay. stick. They their name. And I tend to stick with their devices because they, they're they a large company, they have good support, and they do... They, this is their main thing, is, devi is t uh, capture devices and all that sort of stuff. That's what they do. Um, I would look into them first for a device because they do have a vested interest in keeping their stuff up to date. Now, again... You may have just gotten a bad device, in which case... Check to see if they have a return policy. Yeah, get, get, um, try and get it replaced and see if that solves the problem. Now, one other thing I have, we, I have to mention slash sort of ask. If these are home records, obviously that this shouldn't be a problem. But if it's, hey, I've got all these movies I used to watch on tape and I want to put them on my computer now, it might be that there's copy the what was the copy protection scheme on VHS? Macrovision. Macrovision. It might be that Macrovision is interfering 
with this device and is not letting it work. Yeah, but I, I would. It's not even be able to find it in the device yeah. manager. Yeah. My first, my. I mean, if I see something like that and I put it into different USB slots, and it still is. Here's a way to check. Um, find one of your friends. Find someone around who has a Windows Seven computer or or Windows Eight or Windows Eight. And uh, pl try and install it on their computer and see if it works. If it does, you know for a fact that the device is working and it will work with Windows 7. And it's quite likely that Windows 10 is your roadblock. And if, and it, if, it, if it doesn't, I mean, you, you don't mention this, but when you plug it in, do you, get the, do you get the sound effect that your computer goes, hey, there's something on the USB here. Let me figure out what's going on. Yeah. Uh, that's that's always if, if you plug a USB device and you don't even get that sound effect, there's something wrong with the USB device or the USB port. Run into that once. So th it may be a question of you need to uh, return it if it doesn't work with another computer. If it does work with another computer, I'm willing to say Windows 10 is your roadblock. Yeah, and and then see if they'll see, see if then they'll still take a return saying uh, it yeah. doesn't work with my system. Some companies do that. Because, and here's the important thing, because, you know, they, they may go, well, if they were just a software-based thing, which obviously this wouldn't be, but uh, they would go, no, you've opened the software. We can't, we can't know that you haven't copied the software and cracked it. But because it's a hardware-based device, they may well have a return policy because you're returning the hardware. Um, we, had a, we had a couple of computer building questions this week. I'll, I'll, let, let's start with this one. It kind of covers a bunch of stuff. Um, Michael writes to us and he says, uh, my six-year-old HP desktop is clunked out on me. Uh, after every look, what appears to be adding up to $400 or more to fix it, I'm giving up on it, thinking giving a shot at building one. Have to handle hardware beyond plugging in USB cords. My HP was 64-bit with Windows 7, I think four gigabytes of RAM. The hard drive is, is fine with data intact. Money is a problem. I've got 450 in my pocket and I can take up to $100 out of each pay paycheck to add on. I know Cyber Monday is coming. Um, I know off-the-shelf systems today are all better than my, my old one. But after hearing about what you said about those, I like to trade my hand at building them. Can you help me on what to buy to build a computer, parts and tools, that can handle video editing so I can post on YouTube again and play some uh, a few year old games, or point me, where, point me where I can get some hand-holding help? I love Windows 7, so I'm not looking forward to 10. Uh, if I can, I'd like to have my old hard drive in the new one. Okay. Okay, so the old hard drive and the new one, whatever you put together is going to be the easiest part. <coughs> now, it, it might be an old uh, cable, it might be the old ribbon cable, but your computer will still be, you'll still be able to plug that in. But you're not keeping Windows 7. Yeah, that's not an option unless you find someone who has an unopened, unused Windows 7. Right, you can't, with Windows 7, um, in fact, a lot of Windows, you can't just take the hard drive out of one computer and put it to another and Windows 7 works. It doesn't work that way. Um, well, you can if you have a high degree of technical skill. And it doesn't sound like you do. doesn't sound like you do. Uh, as far as tools go, if you were to go to your equivalent of Best Buy or Fry's or whatever and get a, one of those little sort of, hey, I've got one right here, sort of precision driver kit, all in one things, this will have most of the tools you need yeah. in it. Um, you don't necessarily want one that is using massively strong magnets to hold things together because that might be detrimental to some of your computer parts. Click in, you know, just a little tiny magnet to hold, you know, or just tighten it up and hold a bit. The only real com uh, tool you need for building a computer is uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. Yeah. That's a um, standard unless these you, days. Unless you've got a strange component that needs some other special head. But that's why I say get one of these. You'll you'll have it for everything you ever could possibly need. Now, the question, now the thing is, um, this is a proposition of you've never built a computer before. Now, there are there, are, there here. Let's go with the pros and cons here of getting one off the shelf. The pro of getting one off the shelf is you warranty. War, yeah, the warranty is the big one. It means if something breaks within the warranty period, they'll take care of it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're kind of at a loss, especially if you're building one, because while all the individual parts will have warranties on it. You won't know how to troubleshoot it. You won't know how to single out what's causing the problem. You won't really know what's going on. So unless you're willing to do a heap ton of research into how to do these sort of things, a warranty is a big 
plus for getting an off-the-shelf computer. Now, the downside of it is what you're facing right now. Your six-year-old computer, you can't upgrade because the way they build the cases and the motherboards and the power supplies for a lot of these off-the-shelf systems means you can't just go into a store and buy a motherboard to fit your, new, your old case or buy a power supply to replace it. You have to get proprietary uh, components from the manufacturer. Now, the exception to that, 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 that primarily happens when you buy from like Dell or HP because they're the guys who are big into lock-in. If you go with a third, or I won't say second string name because these are, these are all reputable names. But if you go with a non-Dell, non-HP, you may not have that problem. One thing to check, if you, especially if you have a fries, I don't know, you didn't say where you are. Yeah. If you have a fries, uh, Nash doesn't, but go there. They often have models that are open that you can look inside to see what you've got going on there. And here's, uh, and so Asus makes models that are within your price range and within, well, well within what you want to do. Uh, so does Cybertron, not really work with them. So does Acer. Uh, so does um, so do a few other brands. So you look at these and go, hey, this 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 has what I need, and it doesn't look like it has the proprietary parts. Another another way to get around this. Check your local computer stores. There are still local computer stores that will build you a computer. You just tell them what you need and they'll put it together for you. Yeah. Now, for what you're talking about needing, you want to do video editing and play some games, I think your price range is probably going to be a little bit closer to $750. Mm -hmm. um, what, you'll, what you'll definitely want to have is at least a quad-core i7 processor. That's what you want to tell to look for. Yeah. You want a quad core. I well, all i7s are quad core. You, you want an i7 processor. Um, you're also like sixty seven hundred. What? Six, yes, yeah, six, 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 Yeah. You're also going to want um, a current NVIDIA video card. Uh, one one of the ten one of the one thousand series. The 1060 would be perfect for what you're talking about, and it's a, it's a reasonable price. I think the 1060 is about $250. So it's a reasonable price for, for the 1060 these days. Um, for RAM, 16 gigabytes is what you're looking at, and the good news is RAM Min is- Minimum, minimum eight. Minimum, minimum eight, minimum. but 16 gigabytes is fine, and RAM is dirt cheap these days, so you're in good shape there. Yeah, un until, until another facility has a, a strange, mysterious fire, RAM is dirt cheap. Now, if you want more help in learning how to build stuff, um, Newegg has a series of videos on their website that step-by-step -step show you how to assemble computers. Um, they, they go through a whole bit. They tell you how to mount a cooling system. They tell you how to plug in your power supply. They tell you how to uh, put the motherboard in place. The whole nine yards. Newegg's got all these videos. If you're looking for articles about the ins and outs, especially uh, price guides for modern equipment, and what's your best value at the right price range. Tom's Hardware is fantastic for this. And they do about one, to, and actually they're coming up on, I think they should be releasing their, their Christmas guide right. fairly soon, uh, which is, hey, what's your best bang for your buck at, at budget, at mid-range, mid -range, at High end, and I want to say they do a super high end one, but yeah. that may be memory play. They do a ridiculous one. So, yeah, where you've got ten thousand dollars to drop on a computer system. So yeah, it's it's Tom's Hardware will give you the best. What uh, they they do very in depth ideas about what what you can get for which level of money, and they tell you the best value at each range. Definitely a, a good resource to look into there. Um, the I Windows. Oh, go ahead. There's, a, there's, there's some things I would avoid. Now, if, you, if you end up building your own, there's things I would avoid. Um, Lenovo, if you go off the shelf, avoid them. If you go uh, build your own, don't think, oh, I can cheap out on this component here. I'll get a cheaper video card and upgrade later. It's always more hassle than it's worth. Well, video card, not video, as... Uh, video card, but you're, you're, you're basically throwing away money. And, and it, for the hassle of replacing the video card, going... Oh wait, this doesn't seem to quite fit the way the same way the other one did, or just a little bit wider. It's just a hassle. And do not cheap out on a power supply. Absolutely not. Yeah, do not go cheap on your press. I, 
there, there's a power supply calculator, there are multiple of them online, where you go, I've plugged in, this is my motherboard, this is my processor, this is my video card, these are my common peripherals that I'm going to put mm -hmm. in there, how many hard drives, etc. And it'll tell you what your minimum power supply is. I always go fairly high above that, yeah. because I go, but I, I don't want to replace the power supply, because that's also a pain in the ass to replace, just because unplug all this stuff, remove this, yeah, just... It's just a deal. And disposing of them in California is a pain, too. So that's why I don't want to do it. So I always overpower my systems. And make sure you go go with a reputable one. And I know it's the power supply is not a sexy component in a computer. But it is the... Yes. Yes, it is not, Brady. That's right. Um, but it is the backbone of your entire system. It's where the electricity goes, comes into your system and goes to all the components. And if it fucks up, it's taken everything with it, potentially. So it could yeah. end up, a cheap power supply could end up being a very expensive repair down the line. Yeah. Now, and w when we say cheap, you know, power supply is not necessarily that expensive. You can get a, re a really good power supply for $100 or less. Yeah, the, somewhere between the, the, the $60 to $100 range, but do not buy a $25 power supply thinking, I'm getting a great deal. No, you're well, not. Even, you're getting fucked. You know, a 500-watt power supply for $40, you're like, oh, that's a good deal. No. 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 And uh, so, you know, power supply names there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Cooler Master is good. Antec is good. Thermal Take is good. Thermal Take um, is very good. One thing I look for <clears throat> in, in Corsair. Power Corsair make, the, I, I have to say, Corsair make the quietest power supplies I've ever used. Uh, also, look when you're buying power supplies. If you, if you go the build your own route, the first thing you need to decide on is the case because that will tell you what you can fit in there for everything else. Your power supply sort of has to match the case. Your motherboard has to match the case. Usually not an issue unless you're going for like for a micro tower. Yeah. Um, and uh, case, by the way, case is where a, a computer case is where you can buy, where you can spend a lot of money for something that looks really cool but doesn't necessarily get you much in the way of anything special. Yeah. Because there's a lot of companies that go, we're going to put lots of bells and whistles, and well, not yeah, generally whistles, but lots of blinking lights and plexiglass panels, and so you can see the I inside like your the computer. Lights and and everything is. I, I love blinking lights, but it's, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's extra dollars for something that's. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, my keyboard lights up. I can color map each key separately. My I know. I can up. too. My mouse lights up. The only reason I don't have a headset that lights up that I can control the colors on is because I do shows like this and I think it would probably do something strange to the camera. No, do that. That'd be awesome. Well, the next time... Do, 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 just glowing alien headlight. Yes. Um, so, yeah. I'll, well, I'll see. Well, we, but, we, um, we've kind of well, we've kind of covered everything. Yeah. I think. One thing I would look for in power supplies, by the way, is modular cable. Yeah, that makes things a lot easier. Because then you don't have a bunch of cables just hanging loose in there. You don't, you don't generally have a problem with, you know, sh random shorts happening across cables, but it's just like, I've got a little baggie of spare cables that I'm not using. You put them somewhere secure, somewhere you're not going to lose them. Sock drawer is good because you're going, oh, socks, cables. Okay, I remember where those are. So just basically to sum up, you have to know how comfortable you are going to be with being your own tech support later on. That's, that's something to consider when you're buying uh, off the shelf. Um, another option may be a local computer store. Support local business. It's a good thing. If you have, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if you are looking to go build one yourself, Newegg has a bunch of videos that will teach you how to build it step by step, very slowly. And, and I'll say this about Newegg. Their return policy is really good. Yes, it is. Um, unless, say, if, if unless you've obviously screwed up and broken the component, you go, this is a bad component, I think I got a bad component, they're generally pretty good about taking it back. I, I obviously don't push them on this. Don't go, this is the ninth hard drive I've had to send back to you yeah. guys. And, <laughs> and and finally, if you want a good buying guide, an idea of what to get and what value for your money you're going to get, Tom's Hardware is your. It is such a comprehensive site. They have reviews. They have buying guides. They have they do great in depth stuff on that. And they have they have some construction guides too. And lastly, if you want, if you have your heart set on Windows Seven for a new system, you're going to have to buy that out of pocket. You can't just transfer Windows 7 with the hard drive to a new computer. It, it, it would be a big hassle to make it work. And even then, it probably wouldn't be ideal. You could likely get a disk and do it from the, do it yourself or just buy a key and, and, and whatnot. But yeah, you, 
it, you can make Windows 10 look a lot like look and feel a lot like yeah. Windows 7. There's a program out there called Window Blinds that makes you yeah. know, pay just a few dollars for it. It's, it's it's probably the best value I've gotten out of software to make my computer look the way I want it to. I will say Windows 10 is- not Windows 10 way. Windows 10 isn't quite as bad as everyone makes out to. It's a lot better than Windows 8 was when it released. Still got the, I hated the panels, so I got rid I know, of those. I know, I know. Well, all right, well that's, we're actually over time tonight. That's gonna cover everything for tonight. Mike, thank you as always. And Matthew, thanks for sitting around and listening to us chatter around about tech shit like imbeciles. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Again, if you have questions for Mike and myself, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. We'll see what we can do about answering those questions for you. Um, thanks, everybody. Good night.